Hi, it's been a long time since I've uploaded anything to this channel uh, because of work and stuff. I've recently started working with Substance Painter. Substance Painter is an awesome program tool to create your textures and for games, uh, animation, whatever. It's just great. Uh, you can compare it with uh, DDO, which is a, <clears throat> a plugin which uses Photoshop, but Substance Painter is a whole new ballpark. It uses, uh, it's a standalone tool for anything you want regarding textures. It's mostly strong for uh, game engine stuff. I can show you uh, in a later tutorial if I have the time to make them. Right now I'm making a tutorial that's um, about bringing models, subdivided models from Lightwave uh, to a Substance Painter and a little bit of working with them and pulling them out. So let's get started. First off, this is what I'm going to do today, uh, a console from Star Trek. It's a really quick model I made in like 10 minutes not 10 minutes a little bit less and it's subdivided meaning that it has like really fast and really a lot of polygons and this is not a game model mostly I'll work with substance painter on game models which would be like this would be a hundred and something polygons triangles but this is a lot more so, and working with it, it's completely different. Okay, so let's move on to Lightwave. Why Lightwave? Because that's what someone asked me to do. Uh, as you can see, I have a model here. This is the low poly model. Before I started, uh, let's make it grayer. Uh, yeah, and I really Let's make it something like, oh, here. Sorry, I took my time. It's a new um, color picker. Okay, so this is a low poly, not so much low poly. I could lose all of these um, geometry, but I take this and make it into a subdivision model, which looks something like this. Now, in order to export it into Substance Painter, I have to freeze it, meaning I have to take all this and go down here to uh, Construct and Freeze. What this does, pressing this button, would take all this and freeze it, meaning all the subdivisions are baked in, like there's a lot of geometry. See? Now, this looks exactly like this. See? Both models. Now, before I can export it, I have to UV it. So, it's better if I UV this and then subdivide it. Uh, as you can see, I've already used an Atlas subdivision. It's better if you use um, subdivide it yourself with uh, PLG or other subdivision applications, but this was a quick tutorial. As you can see, there's a, a huge face here all over the UV. Now, this is overlapping, but it doesn't matter because it's a different material, different surface. Uh, if I bring the surface editor here, as you can see, I have a console, which is, uh, which is, all these geometry and I have the screen which is this now why am I doing this because uh, this information transfers into substance painter and we can use it so the screen is the entire length of the UV you'll see it in a second in a few minutes okay so I have this subdivision model I take it and I freeze it this is frozen. You can see the UV is all nicely laid in. It's not a very good UV, but it'll do. There are a lot of um, weird chamfers here. 
Um, but we're gonna take it. So I can take this and file export. I use an OBJ, it doesn't really matter what you use. So I exported it here into subd. I think it was subd, but let's do it again. Okay, so that's exported. I don't need to export anything else if I'm using it only as a um, texture for the subdivided divided model here. So no texture needed. So let's get back into Substance Fader and see this is the result. Let's start fresh. So the first thing you got to do in Substance Fader is hit File and select New. Now let's save all our things here. I can show you again. And here you have to select your mesh. That's the most important thing. You have to select it. See how the low sub D, sub D01, that's what I add. So let's select sub D. Now uh, here, normal math uh, format, I use DirectX uh, X. You can also use OpenGL. It's how normals are oriented and it's different. It doesn't really matter. It's You can play with it afterwards. You can change it. So once I bring it in, as you can see, the model isn't very, um, it's not very nice, but it's okay. Um, I forgot to say that you have to have it's good to have smoothing groups on the model. Um, let's go back to Lightwave. Smoothing group says here I can go into the console and add smoothing with a smoothing threshold of 89.53. It doesn't really matter which number. If you have 25, then it will be much sharper. 45, less, and less and less. Uh, here you see on the screen I don't have smoothing because I want it to be faceted. Now let's get back here. As you can see, this is just the same model we have. It has like smooth normals and everything, but it has no textures. You can see here, this is our UV. This is our 3D plane. You can switch between them here on 3D, 2D, 3D only. 2D only, but this is okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need information. We need input maps. So we're gonna bake some textures. Now, as you may know from other 3D programs, baking is taking high resolution detail and putting them into low resolution detail or other models or taking textures from one model to another. What we're going to do here is simply take from this model and apply it to this model. So we're going to take, not going to put a high definition model here. We can put it here, and but we're not going to do that right now because we're working on an already subdivided model. We're going to set the output size of our textures to 4K. That's 512 by 512. 1K, 2K, and 4K. That's the largest maps. You won't need more than that. And I'm not going to do anything here. This is going to create a normal map, world space normal, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, thickness, all these input maps. So let's bake it. And it's going to work out baking the normals. And, do, do, do. and it's going to freeze. Oh, there it is. There it goes. Uh, yeah. Making the ID. And ambient occlusion. Now you're going to see the ambient occlusion being applied here once it's finished. Yes. I would pause it, but my recording software doesn't have a pause right now. Yes. Uh, as you can see, meanwhile, while this is uh, doing, you can see here on the texture set list, I have console and screen. That's the two surfaces we applied previously in Lightwave. Now, each texture set has its own input maps and uh, texture sets, space color, metallic, all, all these things. So. I'm gonna need to, if I want more normal and more 
uh, stuff on another texture set, I have to bake it again, but only on this part. That's good for if you have a really high poly, high uh, different um, uh, materials, different uh, parts of the mesh. Uh, this is taking a while. Thickness, this is the last map, so we're gonna see some difference. Come on. Sorry about the wait, but I can't pause. And baking finished. Now, what this, this did is it added a whole slew of input maps. I have the normal, world space uh, normal, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, which is very a very good map, position, thickness. Let's see what each of these maps are. I'm going to make a create a fill layer. As you can see this small icon here that's a bucket. And I'm going to only use the color, base color. Let's see what's this like. I'm pressing C to change my channel into the base color. I can continue pressing and as you can see it changes into other channels base color, metallic, roughness, all these. So I can take my texture sets uh, and these are my texture sets. You can see they're here in the shelf under texture. This is ambient occlusion. Let's see. Now we're experiencing something that each and every one of you that's starting this application will see. Something like this. What, what does this mean? Why isn't it showing correctly? That's because our UV scale here is set to 3. I can set it to 1 and then we'll have a correct ambient occlusion. This is a really burnt out ambient occlusion because it doesn't have anything or it didn't change the specs here, but it's good enough for now. I would lo love to have a better one. Uh, you can change this, the UV scale here in your settings to here you can go down I forgot where it was uh, I've got shelf no it's somewhere around here <laughs> I you only have to do it once so I did it once uh, it's supposed to be here ah there default UV scale for materials Let's say, set that at 1 and that would fix everything else. So this is occlusion and this is color ID. If we'd have um, different IDs on our um, high resolution mesh, but we don't have a high resolution mass, mass, mess, mesh, so this is black. But whatever. Uh, curvature. This is an, a beautiful map. As you can see, edges are um, white for um, concave and convex. Concave is the black, convex is the white, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, normal map is going to be just plain purple because we have no extra information. If it was a low poly mesh with a high poly uh, bake, then we would have something. I can show it later. Uh, object space normal uh, position, basically. Thickness, also a nice map. I can use this. And world space normal. Uh, this, also nice. All these maps are going to be uh, added into other generators and um, stuff that we are going to use later on. Now, I'm going to create a fill layer and this is going to be our base color. Let's switch to material, M for material. And the first thing I get in a fill layer is this uh, list of uh, items. Color, metal, rough, normal, and height. Normal I don't need right now because we're not going to use it. And you can see every time I click it, that it disappears. So our base color is going to be, let's say, I want a gray 
uh, metallic is how metallic it is. is metallic and roughness are PBR uh, shaders. Um, right now it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna use these. If you're used to spec and um, specular reflection, all these things from other uh, softwares, you can add those in here. Specular, and as you can see, it added a spec, so I can change the spec, but it's not gonna change here because this is PBR, so we're not gonna touch that right now. Uh, let's say it's not so metallic but and let's change the roughness uh, something like this more plasticky uh, height I'm not gonna touch right now we don't need it on our base layer so let's call this base color now I'm gonna add another layer and let's cancel out all these I just want the color right. I'm gonna work on the color here you see the base color so on the next fill layer, I'm gonna drag the uh, curvature. You can just hit here on the search curve and you're gonna get the curvature. Now this is gonna fill with the curvature. So I want the curvature on overlay. I want the dark pieces to um, darken and the white pieces to highlight. Then that's all, then I'll get nice edges. So I'm gonna select here on the norm this are uh, this is like Photoshop the uh, layer styles and I'm gonna select overlay now this takes everything below like the color and overlays on top of it let's duplicate this let this is called curve and let's put something beneath it let's call this occlusion oc and put the occlu uh, occlusion map ambient occlusion okay now this is set to overlay but I want it to multiply okay let's see see that adds a little bit if I had a surface here downstairs then I would get a better uh, occlusion but that's not necessary right now okay so let's back to go back to the material um, what else are we gonna do here well um, Let's see, this is the basic. So I'm gonna take all this and I'm going to put it in a group. Group. Why am I putting it in a group? I'm naming it smart. Smart test. Because once I pull this into uh, a group, I can make it into a smart material. See, create smart material. Before I couldn't, see, it was grayed out. So create smart material with this name so I can hide it. Go here down below into smart materials and as you can see here we have smart te tests. So we can drag it and it's exactly the same. Now why is this good? If it's the exactly the same using the same textures same thing, it won't work again but it will. Let's see, I have a previous smart material that I used before. Uh, SP, yeah, SP tutorial. Uh, let's see, I believe it was this. I can drag it here. No, yeah, base effects. And this is a smart material I created before. It's exactly the same with a little additions let it chew through that it has to calculate so yeah now let's break it down this uses a different curvature map I created another project but right now I baked it again so let's see it takes the correct curvature map from the one I baked here also an occlusion map it takes the correct occlusion map because it's really smart so we have base color, occlusion, curvature, the same thing we had here. And I've added another thing, which is edge grunge. As you can see this, 
it grunges up the edges but it does something more uh, this as you can see it lowers it down it, it's like it's a crevice and it adds more metal how did I do this well it's pretty simple first off you create a fill layer now a fill layer lets you change all this metal let's, let's put super reflective now uh, I don't want let's say I want color to be white or let's see yeah, yeah white but I don't want everything else so I have a white color super metallic no roughness now as you can see this is on the entire map our entire surface I want to create a mask I'm gonna take right click and add a black mask now it's not affecting at all I can see the mask with alt I can enter it just like Photoshop now if I right click it click the map I can add certain things certain generators levels filters to it so I'm gonna add a generator now from my list of generators I can have more if I go to substance share but that's something else I'm gonna select MG metal edgeware okay now this is taking all my baked textures as you can see curvature ambient occlusion world space normals position and uses them to create all these edge wares, all these dirt and grime and whatever. I can play around with where level, where contrast, see, uh, like this, and create nice grungy texture, metally feel. See, and uh, it creates nice old looking metal thingies. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a height um, channel and lower it down or heighten it, it up. As you can see now, it's eaten. It's like it's eaten the uh, the metal. That's nice. I can do the same for if I wanted to add rust. So this is what this channel does. It's the same thing. Added a fill layer with orange color, pretty metallic. Let's put it like this. Metallic. And our mask is another MG mask builder. I didn't touch it anything here. This is if I would uh, create it again, generator, MG mask builder. This is untouched, just like it came. See, it gave me the same result. I can play around with this, but this is for a later tutorial. Now, this gave me a really nice base. This is my base uh, effects. Another smart material I created for is this plate. Now, as you can see, it's just a group with a single layer. Now this layer has a height, metal, and roughness, and a grayish color. Now, as you can see, it has, it overwrites all the other um, groups beneath it, the height, because I went here into height and change the um, it into normal a little bit too much I'm gonna stop the tutorial here because I've been getting on and on and I'll continue it in a later tutorial thank you and like subscribe if you want more